911, state your emergency. My mom, she's crying. Why is she crying? My dad, she's hitting her. How old are you? Nine. You think he's hitting her? Yeah. My next door neighbor said that to call the police. Oh, honey, I'm sorry. We'll get an officer out there. I remember coming up about a month ago before she had passed away and me and her slept in the bed. She slept with my baby, you know, and those are the things that kind of sticks with you. That's the last time I saw her. On Monday, November 13, 1978, I was at work as was most of all of the family members were at work. And when I got home, I received a phone call and it was Edith. And she just said, Jess, Bob killed Marge. And all I remember is that somebody was screaming and it was actually me. My sister was a very private person, very private mm -hmm. person. And she always kind of like would say, don't tell anybody, don't tell anybody, because she loved us so much until if one of us got hurt, she couldn't have survived. Oftentimes it takes a tragedy in order for people to evolve mm -hmm. socially. And that's exactly. what has occurred here through the center, mm -hmm. providing these services that are deathly needed for someone who just walked out of their house with nothing. Mm -hmm. To start opening themselves up to the possibilities that there are things that will change in their life. Marge's name was so well known. She worked in the center. She worked with the women. And when they called our parents and asked our parents could they name the center after Marjorie, that spoke for who she was. She'd be proud because that's exactly. what she was all about. Yes. It's saving lives, helping lives, and helping people get through any situation that she can possibly help them in. Multitudes and multitudes of families have been impacted by the center. This is a place where you can get help. You can get help. Domestic violence has risen over the year, and the person that's calling in is generally the victim. They think that this is their fault. They think they've done something wrong. And when it's children, it just, it, it's horrible. It just tears your heart out because there are a lot of children who are involved in this, and they get put in the middle. Domestic violence knows no boundaries. We see it in the poor communities, we see it in the middle class neighborhoods, and we see it in the wealthier communities. The Fresno Police Department and the Marjorie Mason Center have a very cohesive relationship, and we get the family out of that house and into the shelter where they're gonna be protected. Uh, it's a confidential location, and they know that once they get there, they're gonna be safe. The leading cause of injury in women is domestic violence. Uh, in U.S., every nine seconds, a woman is beaten or assaulted in her home. Every day, more than three women are murdered by their husbands or their uh, boyfriends. Okay, I'm going to listen to your heart first. Children who are exposed to domestic violence are at greater risk for neglect and abuse. If they have been witness to domestic violence or have been physically abused, they show increased tolerance, not only to be abused, but to use violence. 
We need to break the cycle of abuse in families. The Marjorie Mason Center is extremely important to our community. On a monthly basis, we have about, on average, about 50 children living in our emergency shelter. When children come to our program, they've been through traumatic events in their life. So I like to say that they're just ordinary children, but they've been through extraordinary circumstances. We have children who could be very aggressive, who um, could cry a lot, as well as children who are very quiet and very shy. The children thrive with positive influences in their lives, and I'm honored when they want to share with me what they've been through because it means that they trust me. That gives me hope that you know they, they can learn to trust people because there's been so much pain and so much hurt in their lives. It takes a lot just to put that first foot forward to come through the Margie Mason Center as an adult because it's very difficult to acknowledge that sometimes you were here before, thinking it would never have happened to me, that I've done things differently. It's hard for me to have a good relationship with people and build relationships because of all of the, you know, the mistrust and the stuff that I've been through in my past. So I want to get mm, some help, you know. So it's like your emotions are kind of all balled up inside and things from the past might trigger. When we look at some of the learned patterns and the things that go from one generation to the next, it isn't uncommon that Christina would need to be back here to get some services to help her today. I support the Marjorie Mason Center because I want to be here so I can let my voice be heard. And if I could help anybody, it would make it worth it for me. The Marjorie Mason Center provides a multitude of services. We work with the children, we work with adults, and with the extended family that's also impacted with the violence. Margie Mason Center also offers legal services. So if there's issues regarding restraining orders or custody of children, there's an avenue for them to seek help that way as well. It goes along the whole spectrum, from crisis all the way to recovery. Without the Marjorie Mason Center, we would probably have uh, double the amount of cases. They just help somebody who has nowhere to turn. And by doing this, we not only stop it from happening to that victim, we stop future generations from being victims as well. Marjorie Mason, life was taken. Tragic, definitely. But I see triumph here because of what has come from it. She was my sister. And I know that a legacy like this would be something that she would lay her life down again for.